You probably saw this one coming. Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. It is Thursday and so that means I'm going to be answering a question from you, the viewers. Uh, each Thursday I'm going to go about grabbing a question that is commonly asked and then go through answering what I think about the topic. So uh, let's dive in. Today we're going to be talking about saws. Now I just recently went to an antique store and bought uh, several new saws. So I'm going to be restoring those here soon and probably doing a couple videos on that. But I want to go through what do you look for when you're getting a saw? I mean, are you looking for one that is ready to go or are you looking for one that's covered in rust? You know, are you wanting to buy a new one from the big box store? What are the details you want to look for? The handle, the blade, the teeth? Let's dive in and take a look at it. Now, one of the most common questions I get is what brand of saw should I get? Um, do I get a Distin? Do I get an Atkins? Do I get an off-brand? Do I go buy a Stanley? Uh, really, the brand is pretty much worthless when it comes to saws. They're all going to make a decent quality saw, especially when you're talking about antique saws. Um, anything made pre-1980, you're going to find something relatively decent. And the steel uh, honestly doesn't matter that much in a saw. Some people are going to be really, really picky about the steel and say it's got to be really good quality steel, but what is good quality steel? Basically, you have a, a continuum of you have really hard steel and you have soft steel. Well, soft steel is good for sharpening. It's easy to sharpen. And hard steel lasts longer. So where do you want to be in that conundrum? Um, some people are going to want to be really on the hard side. and Some people are really going to be on the soft side. And it really doesn't matter. Eventually, you'll find out where you want to be and you can kind of pick something out. But some saws I sharpen a little bit more than others. But they're easier to sharpen. And some saws are really hard to sharpen, but I don't have to sharpen them that often. When looking at older saws, the three things in the plate that I look at are, number one, does it have a kink? Is it very straight? I'll look at that here in a moment. Number two, does it have too much rust on it? Now, what too much rust is may vary from one person to another, but I don't like any pitting where the pitting goes most of the way through the plate, uh, which means it, rust really doesn't matter that much. Uh, you can remove a lot of rust and, and not have too much of a problem, and you can clean off any pitting and uh, still have a really good saw. Unless you're really worried about the etch in the saw, rust isn't that big of a deal. The next one is how much wear do you have left in the saw? This one, you can see there's a lot of wear up here. There's about uh, two and a quarter inches on the tip here. Whereas on this one, uh, there's only about an inch and a half. And that means that this has been sharpened a lot and it's actually taken a lot of material off of the saw. You'll find some saws where this comes down to almost a point and these teeth back here are almost all the way up into the handle or sometimes all the way up in the handle. And that means that the saw doesn't have much life left in it. You're not going to be able to get many sharpenings out of it. So I'm looking for a saw that still has a lot of material at the point and a lot of material back at the handle. This one with an inch and a half, it still has enough to work, but I, I wouldn't buy this as my main saw because I know that I'm probably going to be wearing through this in 20 years or so. When looking at the plate, I'll often look to see if there's a bend in the plate. And this is pretty drastic. But most of the time you'll see like a little bend like this. A bend like that where it's gradual is not going to be a problem at all. What's the problem is if there's a kink in the plate and there's a spot in here that is a very sharp bend, uh, those can be almost impossible to get out. But if there's a slight twist in it like this, five, six minutes or even less of just bending the saw around, you can actually get rid of a slight curve in the blade. So don't worry about the curves, but if there's a kink in the blade, throw the saw away and grab another one. But for me, the most important thing about the saw is the handle. The grip on it is, well, it's what you interact with. It's what you're going to hold on to. It's what you're going to feel. And if this isn't comfortable, if this doesn't fit your hand, if it's not ergonomic, if it doesn't fit well into your hand, you're going to have a lot of problems. So when I walk into the antique store, I often see a rack like this where there's a bunch of saws and I can go through them and pick them out very quickly and tell me, tell exactly which ones I want and don't want. Like this one here, it's wavy on the top, but there's no detail to it. You can tell that it was just made with a router quickly and easily. That's not a saw that I'm going to want. This one, there's a bit of a scallop on it. There's a bit of a scallop on it, but the horn's broken on both of these. I'm really not going to be wanting those. And plus, there's not a whole lot of detail in here. This one, there's a scallop, but there's a nice little detail crest in here. And this one, you've got this, two, this double point crest. Uh, that's really sharp. Then I pull this handle out and I can also see there's carving on here and the detail work on this is really nice. That's probably going to be a saw that I'm going to be looking at. So this is a new saw from the big box store and you can tell that a router just made this. The radius here is the exact same as the radius here and exact same as the radius here. When it goes in your hand it feels blocky. You can feel this sharp edge here made by the router. Uh, it just, it's, it's not a nice handle. It doesn't fit very well. It doesn't feel very well. This isn't something that I'm going to want that much. 
Then occasionally I'll come across the handle that looks like this. This was made by a homeowner uh, who just patterned one out and rather than actually shaping it, they came into the router and they went all the way around this and they just put a light, like a quarter inch round over on all the surfaces. And you put this in your hand and it feels horrible. Um, it may look kind of nice because it has a little bit of a scallop shape in here, but the handle isn't going to work very well. It's, it's just not something that's going to feel well in your hand. Then you can move on to a handle like this, and this was probably made in the 70s or so. Uh, it's a nice saw. It's okay. Uh, it's a different radius here than here. You can tell that the router that made this section is different from the router that made this section. And then someone came through with a hand file and tapered out the router from here back to here. So there was some care put in this. You put it in your hand and it's relatively comfortable. But there's still a sharp line here that your hand can feel. There isn't a whole lot of detail up in here. That's just not a saw that I'm terribly impressed with. Is it going to be a good user saw? Yes, this will probably be a good user saw. But it's not the most amazing saw you're going to find. Then you start getting into handles like this Atkins. This is one of my all-time favorite. This is my big rip saw. It's a five-point saw. And the radius here is drastically different from the radius here, which is drastically different from the radius here. This entire handle was hand sculpted. And all of the work on this was done with file on rasp. And someone really took a lot of care in this. Hand carving throughout here. This is a really nice saw. You put it in your hand, it feels good. You don't feel the edges from the rounding on it. It's just a really nice handle. This is one that is going to treat you well. It's going to feel very good. Then in some of the old D8s, you're also going to find them with this hole up here. This is actually a thumb hole for double hand work. And it, I really like it, uh, though I don't use it all that often. This particular one, you can tell the horn here is missing. The, the horn broke off at some point. Um, and no one replaced it. And I don't normally grab saws that are missing the horn on the top and bottom. With the horns gone this far, you, I mean, you've got a little bit of horn here, a little bit of horn here. It's still functional, it's still usable, but I'd probably end up remaking this handle because I want to be able to feel those horns on there to give you far more control over the saw this way. Now you may have noticed I'm not talking about the medallions at all. Uh, the medallions, if you really want to get into aging a saw, that's one of the best ways to do it. But the medallions are, they look cool. Um, same thing with the etch and the blade. I don't know if you can see this one. They look cool, but the etch really isn't going to do anything to the actual work of the saw. The other thing I'm not talking much about is the nib here. Um, originally, the nib was made to be a decorative feature. It was something so that the sawmaker could show off their quality. You know, how good was their workmanship. If the nib was really small and detailed, they had good craftsmanship. Um, if it was large and blocky, you knew they didn't have as much work to get in there and make detail. Um, some people recently have made them into a way of holding on a blade guard um, or a way of storing them, but originally the nib was just there for decoration or uh, detail. Another piece of advice is don't get impulse hardened teeth. You can see how these are blue um, or they'll be darker teeth. That is because the teeth themselves were hardened. The plate is still fairly soft, but the teeth are hard. Uh, you're not going to be able to resharpen that. Anytime you use a file, you're going to ruin your file trying to sharpen those out. Um, if you really wanted to, you could come through the grinder and grind off all those teeth and then re-put in new teeth. But for most of the time, those impulse hardened teeth are going to come on new saws that just aren't as fun to work with and uh, it's not worth it. Not when you go to the antique store and pick up a good old Atkins or Distin for, you know, five, ten bucks, do a little bit of cleaning on the plate, and sharpen up the teeth and you're good to go. So where exactly do I find all my saws? I find them <laughs> just about all over the place. I find them at garage sales, I find them at antique shops, I find them at estate sales. Uh, most every antique mall I've ever gone to, there's usually some booth that'll have a dozen or so of these saws for sale and they're usually anywhere from three to ten dollars. And often the saws with the really nice handles, the ones I like, those are the cheapest ones because for some reason people don't like them. They're looking for the saws that look new and this is the junkie saw, the one I don't want, and these are often the more expensive ones. Um, I don't buy them at big box stores. The newer ones are pretty much trash. They all have impulse hardened teeth. They're all on a crosscut file. They're all with a cheap handle. If it is wood, it's roundered and kind of junky looking. If you're wanting me to get into sharpening saws and restoring them, I do have a whole bunch of videos on that. I'll leave a link to those down below. That's a whole other process. So when getting a saw, I'm really not looking for anything special. I'm not looking at the plate. I'm not looking at the brand. Most of the time, all I'm looking at is the handle and to see if the blade has a kink in it. If the handle is ornate and rounded nicely, you can tell that someone spent some time making it. It feels good in the hand. Both of the horns are there and there's no kink in the plate. I'll usually buy the saw and I'll often have a pile of saws sitting around that are just waiting to be restored and I'll go through and restore them all at one time and clean them up and I'll have a bunch of saws ready to give out to other people. Um, sometimes I will resharpen the teeth and didn't talk about the, the types of teeth in here because you're looking for a cross cut, you're looking for rip saw. Uh, if you want to know what the differences are, I have another video on that. 
Um, and even if you find a saw that's not what you want, you can file off the teeth and put in new teeth. It's, it's not that hard of a process. The most important thing is, does it have a kink? Is the handle comfortable? Great. Go ahead and buy it. So I hope you like this. Um, if you have an idea for another Thursday video, go ahead and leave me questions in the comments down below. I'll try and pull one out of that and uh, use that in future. Also, I'm sure that there's a lot of other questions out here. I'm kind of breezing over this topic. There's a lot of things we can go into about you know, where do you get them sharpening, restoring, um, other little detail things that you look for that your eyes just kind of pick out over time. But this is the, the key features that I look for when I'm buying a saw. I hope this was helpful for you. If you did like this topic, please like, comment, share. That really does help out the channel. Also, I am supported completely from the patrons on Patreon and viewers like you. If you'd like to help out with that, there's a link to Patreon down there. And also there's a link to other places you could help me out if you want to, buying shirts and t-shirts and other swag on my website. That's about it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. For when you're... <laughs>